Water sent debris rushing down. You can see this is just covered in mud and water. Most places saw over two feet of snow. The snow here is up to my knees. They all had to leave their cars behind here at the shooting scene. Judge Gilbert Martinez made the decision that Deer is incompetent based upon a report by the state hospital in Pueblo. District Attorney Dan May says that both sides will have 10 days to contest the decision. With less than two months till the election, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are in everyone's mind. But this debate was aimed for the younger generation. Polls out last night showed this is still an extremely tight race. And the latest Colorado poll shows that Hillary Clinton leads by just four points. We're here outside the debate where hundreds of people are protesting. Now, you have to remember only about 1,000 tickets were given out to be inside. We've noticed several new signs in place warning visitors of the consequences of not following. Following the rules, telling them to stay off the rocks and stay away from the waterfall. The super tanker is capable of delivering nearly 20,000 gallons of water or fire retardant at a time. There are similarities in this rash of jewelry theft. It either starts with a knock on the door or ringing the doorbell. Then there's a man waiting outside saying he works for a company. Certainly some relief for passengers. The news first came in just after 2.30 this morning and we just received word that all grounded flights have been lifted. It has been extremely windy out here all day. The wind kind of comes and it goes, but when it picks up, boy, it's like blizzard-like conditions. It is just wet, rainy, and a little windy out here this morning. We're live near I-25 in Briargate. A very exciting time of the year. I am now joined by Rod Slyhoff of the Pueblo Chamber of Commerce. And Rod, you have been here since the beginning. He was here 22 years ago for the very first festival, and you've helped it grow. The homeowner says he started this tradition 15 years ago for his autistic son, but it's grown into something much bigger. A Colorado Springs woman has been cited after police say her dogs attacked an animal law enforcement officer. Investigators say that the officer was responding to a call for service in the 900 block of South Arcadia Street yesterday afternoon. It's been three years since Kelsey Schelling went missing without a trace, and her mother is still looking for answers. Heavy rain and flooding turned roads into rivers. I was getting very scared for my life, really, because cars were still trying to drive, cars were parked. Uh, water was coming above people's tires. Brian Gantz was caught in the storm. He made it through the flooded streets, but when he got home... Literally hundreds and hundreds of gallons of water were rushing through my doorway. Slammed the door shut and just started trying to pack things up and move things as much as I could. In just one hour, his apartment was under three inches of water. So I had water about that high, just pushing through the door. Everyone living on the bottom floor was hit hard. The water came gushing through. It was almost like 15 to 18 inches. Now many are trying to clean up the mud-covered floors and tear out carpet. We threw away some furniture already. I got it still to see the couch is still wet. In this neighborhood near Palmer Park Boulevard and North Union Boulevard, you can see there's still a lot of hail left behind, just piled up out here and covered in debris. A lot of hail, a lot of water. Uh, not too many people. <laughs> and that's about it. You couldn't see much. Roland Mango tries to make the most of the situation by photographing the damage. I'm retired now, so it's a means to get out and do something. He considers it a hobby while he waits for the damage to let up. But for others who were hit hard, they're left wondering. I just don't know what to do. I don't know where we're going to go. With a lot of cleanup to do and nowhere to go, Gantz hopes to get help from the Red Cross. In Colorado Springs, Angelica Lombardi, KRDO News Channel 13. It's these real life scenarios that are preparing Fort Carson soldiers to deploy to any contingency operation worldwide. So we go through pre fire checks, uh, we go through uh, different ways to occupy a firing position, different types of fire missions. Missions using Bradley fighting vehicles, Abrams, Strikers, and more. Nathan Driscoll serves as a platoon leader. His role focuses on verifying the position of guns. Making sure that our fire direction center, which is responsible for the uh, ballistic solutions of the projectiles, making sure that they have everything together, um, and ultimately making sure that we're firing safely. This is the largest field training exercise put on at Fort Carson. It's conducted by the 3rd Armor Brigade Combat Team. This is training. Uh, this is an excellent training opportunity because you don't want to get caught uh, downrange and uh, not have trained. 
Soldiers are conducting attacks through a synchronized fire coordination exercise. One of the hardest parts, preparing mentally. You can't come out here without mentally being prepared because even just doing a uh, dry fire or even live fire when you're shooting and nobody's shooting back at you, there's a lot that can go wrong. So you need to always be in the game. More than 4,000 soldiers trained in this real life scenario. This has been a really great training uh, opportunity for the brigade as a whole. In Fort Carson, Angelica Lombardi, KRDO News Channel 13.